All right, so just a quick little wrap up as to what we did and what we learned here in this class. Now, when you go to any website, they all follow a same structure and that structure is HTML. Now, when you use HTML, you always pretty much always use some type of styling. Internal style sheets are when you write the styles right on the HTML. External ones are like this. We pull it out and allow the entire site to look great, just like we see here. Now using something like Bootstrap makes this a lot easier for us. And then we decide our own custom CSS to just kind of customize the template a little bit. Bootstrap makes it simple, but we still need to customize it, if not customize it more than what we've seen here. Now whenever you go to a website, it's almost like knocking on a computer's door, if you will. You are requesting something from that computer. So going to this specific address, you're requesting something. That server sends something back to you. So it's another computer sending something back to your computer so you can see it. Now, if you click on sometimes buttons or a form, you will send something to the server in the form of a, another request. So you're constantly asking and requesting for data. Now this data is handled by some type of programming language. In this case, we use Python, the programming language, and then we use Django, which is the framework of Python. Django is 100% Python. Um, so you're still using Python programming when you use Django. So all the Python methods and stuff like that, you can use within Django. So when we send our request, Django handles it and sends something back to us. What's great about this is that we can then kind of define what type of things that we want from people in our models. So models.py is how we define what we want or what kind of data. And then we use a form, an automatically made form from those models to get this data views are the way that it's actually displayed. So models hold the definition of what data it is. Forms.py makes the form actually being able to render. Views.py actually renders not only the form, but the entire page. Views handles the request. And when we know what view that we need to use, it's based off of the URL that we are using or what we pass through to that specific view. Um, but usually it's the URL. So like we see here, it's thank you is the URL. That means that Django, when it's when that request is sent to the server, the, this address as a request sent to the server, Django is going to look in the URL to see what it is. It recognizes that it's thank you. It notices that thank you is in URLs.py urls.py tells Django which view that it needs to use to render this specific page. And that's what is going on here. Once we submit this data, the view again has to understand what's going on with it and saves the form or does something with the form or doesn't save the form or sends an error back. Um, if the form is successful or if it's valid data, then it's going to send an email as we defined it to where it needs to go. Um, it's pretty cool as to what programming does. It allows us to kind of capture data, but also use this data to make an experience for the user that you might not have otherwise. Now, of course, programming can get very, very complicated in the point of what we did today is so you can launch your own project. Now, this site might not be perfectly branded to what you want, but what you can do with it is you can launch it. You can put it online. It has a domain name. You can share it on your social networks and better yet, you can get pre-orders from anyone in your tribe or community or somebody who wants to back your project. Now, of course, the marketing side of it can be challenging, but now you can do this many times. You can try a hundred different ideas using virtually the same code and maybe just a different video, which is awesome. It's the power of what the internet can do. Now, this is a basic overview recap of what we've learned. 
Now, there's plenty of other places that you want to kind of try and pick up more coding if you want. Um, we also have other classes, so look out for messages or news about the other classes that we offer so you can kind of kind of hone your coding skills a little bit more so you can test more ideas or different ideas rather than just getting a pre-order and stuff like that. So thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever, codingforentrepreneurs at gmail.com or even my personal email is the letter J Mitchell, my last name, M-I-T-C-H-E-L, the number three at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so we are super excited that we got this far this quickly. Um, I know I covered a lot of information and I know that it went kind of fast, but the greatest part about using this platform is you can always go back and rewatch these videos over again. And don't worry too much about the different versions and stuff like that. Most of those things will be well documented somewhere that you can at least search for it and find answers. Again, you can always email me. Thanks again, guys. Welcome, and I'm super excited to see your projects. See you hopefully soon. Cheers.